July 16, 1950, the world's largest football stadium, the Maracanã. 175,000 spectators are packed in to watch Uruguay take on Brazil in the fourth World Cup final. 52 million Brazilians believe that victory over their small neighbour and previous World Cup winners is theirs for the taking. But celebrations for Brazil's first goal are cut short by Uruguay's equaliser. Then, Guija surges on challenge down the right wing and fires a shot just past Barbosa, the great Brazilian goalkeeper. A stunned silence greets Uruguay's 2-1 victory. And the ill-fated Barbosa is doomed to end up an alcoholic on Copacabana's beaches. This defeat is a national disaster. But two impoverished kids are to pull Brazil back from the brink. One of them is from the outskirts of Rio, and the other from the mining region, Gorincha and Pele. By 1957, Gorincha's wizardry has brought the Maracanã back to life. The bandy-legged winger, nicknamed Little Bird, is Botafogo's irrepressible star, adored by fans and feared by opponents alike. March 2nd, 2nd, and Rio's Botafogo come up against Santos. The team from Sao Paulo have an emerging talent, Pele. The 17-year-old striker is named Edson in honor of the inventor of electricity, Thomas Edison. In Brazil, very few people have light bulbs. It's an inauspicious first encounter. Garincha's legs turn to lead, and Pele, the linchpin, can't pull his team together. But it's a start. This is 1958, and football has become a serious business in Brazil. The old spirit of amateurism is dead. Hotels for the World Cup in Sweden have been booked a year ahead, and the team's every waking minute is fully accounted for. Both Pele and Garincha are instant pin-ups. For Swedes, the Brazilian team are exotic and mobbed wherever they go. The whole country
country keeps vigil during the night of the 14th of July. Macumba rites take place all over Brazil in an attempt to jinx the Soviets. But Faiola, the Brazilian coach, finds a more lethal solution. He calls up Garincha and Pele. Brazil defeat Austria, but draw against England. They have to beat the Russians. Garincha, playing down the right, destroys the slick Soviet machine. Yashin, the world's greatest goalkeeper, senses that his time is up. Garincha leaves his unfortunate opponent, Kuznetsov, stranded and bewildered. Brazil score in the fifth minute. But there was no respite for the Russians in the second half. They marked Garincha with two, then three, then four men, but it's useless. Sixty-six minutes gone, Garinja takes a free kick that finds Pele, and a death blow is dealt to the Russians. The world's greatest substitutes have pulled it off. Brazilian magic has destroyed the Soviet machine. Mario America. Brazil's Masur, Voodoo and Samba experts prepares the team for their quarter-final against Wales. But knockout tension favours the Welsh. Garincha can't get his crosses in and luck the crossbar and Kelsey are all on the side of Wales. But after 66 minutes, Pelly gives his first masterclass. He controls the ball with his chest, lobs it over the defender and volleys it into the net. It is perhaps his most important goal. Brazil are through. Five days later, and two minutes into the semi-final against France, Vava takes on the French goalkeeper. France equalise, but the scores are not level for long. Didi, the great Brazilian strategist, as the situation in hand with one of his characteristic fearsome drives. Brazil begin to pile on the pressure. A moment's lapse in concentration in the French defence allows Brazil's 17-year-old with a golden opportunity. France is finally vanquished in the 76th minute when Garincha crosses a perfectly timed pass from Didi, another masterpiece.
In Brazil, the party has already started. Twenty ninth of June, nineteen fifty eight, the big day. Brazil meets the hosts, Sweden, in the final. All over Brazil, even in the prisons, 140 million ears are glued to the radio. But Sweden take the lead after only five minutes. Brazil are trailing for the first time in the tournament, but the cool-headed Didi calmly reorganizes the game around Garincha. Both Garincha and Pele threaten the Swedes. Garincha's dazzling footwork mesmerizes the Swedish defense. The cross causes the Swedes to hesitate leaving Varva to take advantage. The Swedish game looks pale by comparison. The Brazilian defence is impregnable. The 55th minute, and Pelle smashes the ball into the back of the net. Back in Rio, they start to believe in victory. A spell has been cast. Pele, only five foot nine, climbs over the Swedish defence to head the ball once more into their goal. 5-2. The ghosts of 1950 have finally been laid to rest. For Brazilians, the new victors represent the best of a new society, multiracial and open to everyone. Sixteen fighter jets escort the presidential envoy that accompanies the champions home. Millions take to the streets of Rio. Garincha prefers to party on the streets, whilst already Pele mixes with the elite.
both his country and club are keen to capitalize on Pele's international celebrity. A grueling European tour is arranged, with 20 matches in one month. Just 21, Pelly is the undisputed boss of the Santos team. He's the one they're paying to see. He has everything. He's the perfect footballer. Você nunca pensou em trabalhar no cinema? Com a Ava Gardner? <risos> Não, nunca pensei. But whilst Pelly is happy in a suit and tie, Garincha prefers to be barefoot with his friends. He's not very interested in money or his international success. For Garincha, life is about the real Brazil. Football, women and drinking with his friends. Eu famoso em 58, quando cheguei aqui, depois fui para minha terra em Pau Grande, senti que estava famoso porque conversando com os amigos, um deles falava. E minha casa vivia muito cheia de gente, e eu saía também para fazer compra e viajava sempre de trem e sentia talvez assim vinha cansado dos treinos e achava que o pessoal ali não estava assim perturbando um pouco então me sentia um pouco cansativo da vida de de vida mas, mas você sabe que nós não podemos fazer nada temos que fazer aguentar isso tudo porque o povo quer e para eles é, é bom Garincha is media shy. The appearances he does make are out of kindness and out of his desire to get to know a young, famous black singer, Elsa Suarez. <laughs> Although married with children, Gorincha falls madly in love with the beautiful Elsa. May 1962, Gorincha flies with the Brazilian team to the World Cup Finals in Chile. But Pelly is worn out after playing 100 matches in a year, and he's injured in the second game. Instead of scoring goals, he signs autographs.
Without Pele, the Brazilian team flounders. Even the great Didi can't break the one-all deadlock with Spain. Garincha, however, comes to the rescue. Four days later, they meet England in the quarter-final. Gorincha scores again. <laughs> By this stage in the game, England appeared to be out of the competition. But Gorincha's appetite for more is undeniable. He scores again. the 13th. Brazil meet the host Chile in the semi-final. Nine minutes in, a cross finds Vava, whose superb bicycle kick is deflected and falls to Gorincha, who has no problem scoring from 20 yards. It's the first of two Gorincha goals that day. But in the 83rd minute, Gorincha impulsively lashes out at his opponent off the ball. Disgraced and sent off, he is banned from playing in the final. Even a head injury from a rock thrown at him doesn't earn him any sympathy. But the Brazilian camp pulls strings and Garincha is reinstated for the final. In the final, the Czechs strike first. Then they slow their play right down to upset Brazil's rhythm. Garincha takes them on at their own game. The score is soon levelled by an astonishing goal. The final goal is scored by Zito. Brazil win 3-1. They are the world champions for the second time. Pelly looks on from the stands. Back in Brazil, police at the presidential palace are overwhelmed by the crowds who trample over Pele to get to Garincha. In 1962, 150,000 packed the Maracanã for Rio's local derby between Flamengo and Botafogo. To the delight of Botafogo fans, a familiar figure dribbles his way down the right wing to more goals.
December 1962. Botafogo wins the Rio State Championship for the second year in a row. Garincha scores two of the three goals. Brazilians love the Garincha simplicity. He is one of them. This is not lost on the marketing department of VW. Even the Garincha family are made over. But he has become an absentee father. Even in their best dresses, his seven daughters can't hold his attention for long. Brazil is a Catholic country, and the thought of Nair, his abandoned wife and his children, ensure widespread disapproval and condemnation. Garincha, nonetheless, moves in with Elsa. Pele is the darling of Brazilian society. At the age of 23, he is the star of his own biopic. Pelé, como prefeito da cidade de Bauru, eu te saúdo. Pele makes better copy than Garincha, but the film is a fiction even the return to his native city with loving parents looking on. Pele's life has become a fiction. His role is to encourage the belief that in Brazil, whites and blacks can be together. is indeed without peer. The Portuguese players of Lisbon's Benfica chasing after him attest to his supremacy. And Pele is also the perfect teammate. Everybody loves him. Already a World Cup winner, Pele plays in the Intercontinental Cup between the European and South American club champions. And these are the 60s. Football is international. Suddenly, Pele is the first great world star.
But whilst the Pele star is in the ascendant, something ugly appears on Garincha's knee. The byproduct of numerous injections administered to keep the magic alive. The love story is turning sour. The Botafogo Flamengo derby lacks the spark of previous years. The skill is still there, and it still enthralls the crowd. But the killer instinct has gone. the fans are worried about the loss of their star's form. On October the 13th, 1963, Botafogo drop Garincha. It couldn't have come at a worse time. Garincha is in the midst of an acrimonious divorce. Garincha's children are paraded in front of the press. On the 20th of June 1964, someone breaks into Gorincha and Elsa's house and wrings the neck of their pet minor bird. It's a bad time for Gorincha. Society won't forgive him for having chosen Elsa instead of his wife and family. Discarded by his club and with little respite from his badly damaged knee, Gorincha becomes desperate. Gorincha risks an operation, watched over by Elsa. In 1966, Pele marries Rosemary Cholpe. On honeymoon, they visit her native Germany. Pele is the perfect son-in-law. The newlyweds visit the Pope in Rome. Oh 
emoção que não podemos explicar de maneira nenhuma. Arrepiava o corpo da gente, dava frio, calor. E, infelizmente, não, não, não se pode equivaler quanto a nossa satisfação em ser, sermos recebidos pelo Papa. The Brazilian team head for England and the 1966 World Cup Finals. July the 12th, and Brazil meet Bulgaria in Liverpool. Pele and Gorincha are both there. The flavour of football is distinctly European. Defensive and rough, it stifles the natural Brazilian game. In the 14th minute, Brazil are awarded a free kick for a foul on Pele. Gorincha Ominously, no longer the number seven shirt stands alongside Pele, who converts in spectacular fashion. Garincha is full of endeavor but finds it difficult to cut through the Bulgarian defence. The physical aspect of the modern day game is beginning to catch up with the Brazilian star. Pelé and Gorincha stand side by side, but it's Gorincha who takes the free kick. For a moment, the crowd can dream the old Gorincha is back, and Pelé shares that dream. Back in Brazil, Elsa celebrates. Two days later, it's hungry. Coach Viola rests the slightly injured Pele and rearranges his attack. Amongst the new faces is a certain Jarzinho. The Hungarian goalkeeper makes a great save. Suddenly, it seems as if Brazil are not invincible. But 12 minutes later, Tostao, Pele's replacement, levels the score. Gorincha doesn't play well and fails to get the breaks. Outperformed by the Hungarians, Brazil are defeated 3-1.
The whole country expects a Pele-inspired miracle to see off Portugal. Garincha is sidelined. But the feet of clay are there for all to see. It's too late. Portugal lead 2-0. Pele is singled out for special attention. He's carried off. He comes back exhausted. But Brazil return home defeated. Nineteen sixty nine, released by Botafogo, Garincha is signed by Flamengo. Out of shape, but still smiling, he's back in a number seven shirt. Garincha is the ghost of his former self. April the 13th, tragedy strikes. Garincha crashes his car into a lorry, killing his mother-in-law. Elsa doesn't blame him and does her best to see him through black suicidal depression. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pele is still riding skyward. The whole country awaits his elusive 1,000th goal. Finally, on November the 19th, he breaks through the defence of Vasco, but he is denied by a miraculous save. <laughs> Only a quarter of an hour is left, but a penalty is awarded. Pelé comes forward to take it. A crowd of 100,000 are watching. In 1970, Elsa and Garincha travel to Rome. She has signed a contract for several months, mainly to tear him away from the drink and distract him from the forthcoming World Cup.
Lei verrebbe volentieri a giocare in Italia? Sì, per me sì. Io quiero giocare in Italia perché sempre sogno con l'Italia. Verrebbe volentieri perché ha sempre sognato di giocare in Italia. Ma Elsa non può curare dal alcoolismo. Nessuno vuole Gorincia. Elsa Soares è un nome famosissimo in tutto il mondo e soprattutto in Brasile dove è nata e dove è una delle cantanti più popolari. È venuta con Garrincha. Grazie. È un nome famosissimo agli appassionati di calcio. Garrincha, famosissima ala, che ha lasciato il calcio da un po' di tempo. No, non l'ho lasciato. Non l'hai lasciato. Quando riprenderai a giocare? Sì, dopo la Coppa. Dopo la Coppa. Che non costa di samba, con soggetto non è, è ruim da cabeza. May 31st, Brazil minus Garincha meet Czechoslovakia in the opening game of the 1970 World Cup in Mexico. Pelle catches the Czech goalkeeper off his line, and a remarkable lob from his own half just goes wide. The team of 66 have come into their own. Watch Tostau as he taunts the English defence before he passes the ball to Pelé. Jarzinho, Garincha's successor, scores a crucial goal. Twenty years have elapsed since that dark day at the Maracanã. Now Brazil face Italy in the final. Early in the first half, Pelle gives the South Americans an amazing start. The Italians are no pushovers, but once again, it's Pelli who provides the telling ball for Jarzinho to score. He's now scored in every round of the tournament. Pele gives Carlos Alberto, Brazil's captain, the last goal. The Italians are defeated 4-1. Brazil are now the undisputed champion of champions. Three-time winners, the little gold wing statue is now theirs for keeps.
Football is no longer innocent of politics in Brazil. The military regime in power is determined to make the most of the World Cup victory. The exploits of the Brazilian team are a way of distracting Brazilians from the realities of the most brutal repression, and players are forced to go along with the propaganda. Confiança e disciplina, resultado do trabalho em conjunto. 1971, Elsa and Garincha return from their catastrophic exile in Rome. Elsa keeps her promise to Garincha. She shaves her head on the day he finds a new club, Olaria. His debut, by some unkind twist of fate, is against former rivals Flamengo. Gringer finds it impossible to return to former glories. No one can do anything for Garincha except Elsa. But her prayers are answered at the end of 1973, with the promise of a testimonial. December 1973. At the Maracanã, they're practically all there. The heroes of Mexico City come to pay their respects to the number seven. 135,000 spectators show up.
Grinch's legs are still deformed. He can't use them anymore. But for a brief moment, he is side by side with Pele. Hope is still attached to the figure of this 40-year-old man who can hardly stand upright. The crowd is waiting for a miracle. But this game is not about miracles. It's about the love of 135,000 Brazilians for their fallen god. And the Garincha gives them everything, right down to his shorts. Told us that he will return to soccer and will play for the New York Cosmos. Põe 10. Se fala em 10, eles falam sim. Entende? Eles aqui complicam. But I say that the money is not the problem. Who makes the confusion? What the press? <laughs> because one say one million, another say nine million, another one say four million. You made the confusion. The money is a simple one. 1975, Pele leaves Santos, says goodbye to Brazil and hello to the United States. His mission is to promote soccer. Pele doesn't seem to be affected by the poor standard of the game around him. He's here in the US to score goals and to keep the sponsors happy. I like it. Always when I can talk with them, can stay, play with them, I like it. And I have to tune the two. And to the, the, the children in Japan, good luck. And nice to be here again. I don't see much difference. I sometimes forget that I'm a negro because... Se eu vou na, na Rússia, por exemplo, se eu vou à uh, China, no Japão, eles me tratam como se, eu, se fosse um japonês. E agora eu estou nos Estados Unidos. Não tive problema nenhum porque as crianças me adoram, as crianças vêm falar comigo, todo mundo quer beijar, quer abraçar Pelé. Então eu, eu acho que Pelé não tem cor, Pelé não tem religião e Pelé não tem raça. Pelé é universal. Lord. Lord, and Lord, thank you very much. Let's open
Pele, you've had many emotional moments in your life. This has to be one of the best, one of the top for you. A tremendous turnout on a terrible day, and you obviously felt the deep love they have for you in this country. No doubt. This is a great moment, I love it. You came here three and a half years ago, and you have turned this country on to your sport. But as much as anything, they have accepted you and loved you. That's uh, that's uh, it's beautiful because you see the people recognize what you do, what I did. I did because I put my heart, because I believe in people, I believe in sport. In 1977, Pelé returns to Rio and the Copacabana beach. Pelé said, when I quit football, I'll be a little nigger again. But he was to prove as great a figure in retirement as he had been at the prime of his career. Gorincha is unable to shake off his depression, despite the birth of his son. The ever-faithful Elsa can't do anything about his alcohol addiction. In the end, they separate, and the pictures of Garincha with his child are strictly for the cameras. Garincha goes back to the only life he can manage, hanging out with his friends and drinking with them. Para mim representa tudo na minha vida. Essas matas onde eu cacei tanto, isso, nossa senhora, subi tanto essas matas. Já me perdi nessas matas, eu já fiz tanta coisa de pau branco. O pau branco é o lugar melhor do mundo. Então hoje a gente joga pelo veterano e já aposentado um dia do futebol. Então você se sente feliz, porque o povo gosta de você. Eu, eu juro por Deus, eu sou uma pessoa, bem, eu sou uma pessoa realizada. Não sabia que toda essa multidão gosta de mim, eu sou feliz. He plays some matches, but he also coaches poor children at the behest of the Brazilian Football Federation. This is a scheme dreamed up to help Garincha. But in the end, nothing can save him. In 1981, the Rio Carnival, Gorincha's role is to sit on the football float as a still prized exhibit. Pelé is present too, but he is a member of the celebrity audience. J. 
January the 20th, 1983. At the age of 49, Gorincha dies of cirrhosis of the liver. Many had forgotten Gorincha, but he was remembered in death. People came from every corner of Brazil in order to bid farewell. Gorincha's body was driven through Rio. Thousands lined the route. Pele and Gorincha changed football and created a new Brazil. They will never be forgotten. They are the true gods of our time. Our Storyville birthday celebration series is back on BBC4 next Tuesday at half past ten with a Russian double bill. Next tonight, new comedy for Tuesdays with Rob Newman's History of the World backwards.